Welcome to a virtual plant tour of McWayne ductile iron poles. This is our manufacturing facility in Provo, Utah. The iron in our poles comes directly from recycled metal. The recycled metal is sorted and lifted into a furnace called a cupola. The cupola is a large still cylinder that melts the metal into molten iron. 2,800 degree molten iron flows out of the cupola and into a series of troughs and ladles. The desulfurization ladle removes some of the sulfur to bring it down to the levels needed to change the gray iron into ductile iron. The hearth ladle holds the iron until it is ready to be transported to the different casting machines. The transfer ladle is where we add magnesium, which starts the process of transforming the metal from gray iron into ductile iron. This ladle then feeds the individual casting machines. Each casting machine has a backup ladle and machine ladle that holds the iron about to be made into pole sections. Cooling iron made up of scrap pieces is sometimes added at this point to help bring the iron to the correct casting temperature. The casting machine has a stainless steel spinning mold inside a water-cooled bath. The iron is poured down a trough and into the spinning mold and the centrifugal pressure of the spin forces the iron to the wall of the mold. It spins until it's cool enough to extract from the machine. The molds are roughly 18 feet long, and that is the length of a single pole section as it comes out of the casting machine. The pole sections are then fed into the annealing oven. Inside this oven is where the pole section's final chemistry is set and where it is fully converted into ductile iron. The oven has different temperature zones, ranging from 2,000 degrees to 1,200 degrees. Various metallurgical changes take place in the oven, and this determines the ultimate strength of the iron. The minimum strength requirements are 60,000 pounds per square inch of tensile strength, 42,000 pounds per square inch of yield strength, and a 10% elongation factor. At this point, the pole sections are moved off the line to be taken to a laser thickness gauge, which measures the wall thickness along the entire pole section. However, every fifth section is set aside for physical property testing. This pole section will have a small coupon cut out of the iron wall, and the coupon will be brought into the lab. It is cut, shaped, and polished to accommodate the different tests it will undergo. The different tests we perform are a Charpy impact test, a tensile test, a hardness test, and a microscopic visual test. These tests tell us if the iron has met the minimum strength characteristics, the carbon in the iron has the right structure, and if the elongation factor has been achieved. Positive results from these tests will tell us we have good iron and that the oven is set to the right speed and temperature. The 18-foot pole sections are then staged for assembly and organized by size and wall thickness. The individual sections are brought in through a large bay door and fed into a press one at a time. The 50-ton press forces the tapered sections together into a pole. The pole is measured with a laser and cut to the correct length with a large bandsaw. Poles are moved from one station to the next with material handling shuttles and the next step is the drill. The hole pattern in each pole is specified by the customer and loaded into the program that runs the two CNC drills. The drills work in unison to drill the pole on opposite sides of the same axis along the entire length of the pole. Once one axis has been drilled, the pole will turn in place and another axis can then be drilled. Drill patterns will often call for different hole diameters and the drills can change hole sizes on the fly. The base of the pole is then heated with an infrared heater and this will help the embedment coating to cure quickly. The base of the pole is then coated with a two-part epoxy coating called Permasafe. Part A and B of the epoxy are mixed and fed into the sprayers. The overhead sprayer coats the outside of the pole, and a lance moves inside the pole and coats the interior as the pole spins. The inside and outside coatings are applied to be above the ground line once the pole is installed. Name plates are engraved and later attached to the pole. At the last stage of assembly, the top caps are attached, the name plates are installed, and centerline marks are added to each pole. The poles are strapped into individual rows and then into a full bundle. The poles are then carefully loaded onto a flatbed truck for delivery to the final destination.
hope you have enjoyed learning how McWayne ductile iron poles are made and found the process interesting and informative. Thank you for watching.